Hello, in today's video I will be going over the tools required to build a Voron printer. The Voron printers are designed to be built with off-the-shelf components requiring no custom machining and as such the tools required are actually relatively simple and common. Most of these can be found on Amazon or even your local hardware store. For assembly your frame and attaching most components you will be using uh, M3 or M5 screws for the most part. For that you will need uh, hex drivers. Now personally I'm a fan of allen keys although some people uh, kind of balk at that but I do like allen keys because when you go to tighten them you can kind of get a good feel for the actual torque you're applying to the screw uh, using the long hand. I find using uh, driver style ones uh, you don't get as good of a feel, however, if you are a fan of the driver style ones, um, that is another valid option as well. If you do pick up a set, uh, try and get the ones with the uh, ball on the end. This will make it uh, easier to screw in on some of the tighter locations. However, I find you have to be careful with ball end when actually tightening, as these do have a tendency to strip the smaller size screws such as M2 and M3. You should always use the, uh, the flat side. When tightening, this will give more meat on the thread and it'll prevent stripping. Now, along with hex drivers, you will also need to uh, use some small screwdrivers uh, for attaching your power supply cable you know, to the power supply, for uh, tightening these uh, fittings on your ramps connectors. You will need small screwdrivers. Most screwdriver kits uh, come with smaller screwdrivers. I do have some of these. However, you can also pick up uh, a combo pack such as this one. is like on AliExpress, I believe it's under $20. It has pretty much all the small bits you'll need. Um, these are handy for other electronic projects as well. So having a set of these won't uh, do you any disservice there. Now, these are an assortment of crimpers I own and use. Um, with crimpers, you can spend a little or you can spend a lot and they are definitely something where you want to spend the money. Um, starting off with the smaller DuPont style connectors, um, you're going to be using this style of crimper. Now this is the one, if you ask anyone, they will recommend. Uh, it's a PA09, it's an engineer, uh, as a producer, you can get these on Amazon. Um, Arrow, most electronics retailers carry them. They are made in J-Pan. And then these are the generic $3 AliExpress special. Um, they're heavier, they're bulkier, they ratchet, but these have a tendency to completely mangle the fitting when you crimp them on. And then once this gets mangled, uh, good luck properly inserting it into the housing. The PA09, while they do look simpler, they're actually manufactured to a uh, better degree of accuracy and their crimps are a lot more consistent. When I built my V1, I cheaped out of course because everyone cheaps out the first time they build and bought one of these and probably every two or three crimps I ended up having to cut off the uh, connector and try again because these completely mangled it and I wasted a lot of connectors I had to retrim and recrimp wires many times. I did not have solid crimps, so after this, I bit the bullet. I bought these PA09s. You know they don't crimp, you get a good feeling for the manual uh, pressure you're putting on them when you crimp, and these will serve you. These will work with any of the uh, DuPont style, the Molex KK, and even for the Microfits. These work perfect for them, and if you're gonna buy one crimper, uh, get these. There is a larger model, however the PA09 will serve for any uh, 3D printing electronic stuff for the most part. Now for uh, your prong connectors and you will need a larger crimper. Now this one um, it's a Mastercraft. I picked it up at Canadian Tire. It came with a kit with a whole bunch of the prong style crimps as well. Usually you pick these up in like a combo pack and these are sufficient for crimping the larger style crimps for your uh, wiring for the power supply. Now for the ferrules, whenever you go to install a wire and to these style of connectors, 
while you can insert a bare wire, it's always better to put a ferrule on the end. This keeps everything bundled and it keeps a, you know, a stray wire from fraying out and causing a short. So for those, uh, this is the one I use. Again, I bought this as a kit with a whole bunch of ferrules. I'm probably never gonna run out. This and this was on Amazon for 20 or $30, I believe. I'm probably never gonna run out of those because you only need a handful for your build. And those are the crimpers. Now, you can get by with your $3 crimper. And, you know, one of these that probably everyone has in their toolbox somewhere, and they're probably old and rusted. However, uh, we do recommend, you know, getting quality tools. They will make your build a lot easier and a lot less headache inducing. Now, before you can crimp your wires though, you will have to strip them. Um, I have two different styles of wire stripper here that I have. Uh, this is one I picked up at Home Depot, this one's Amazon. Um, when you do pick up strippers, ensure they go down to the smaller gauge wire. We go down to 24 gauge wire on the Voron. Um, so some of these don't go that low. You do want ones that go down that low so you can properly strip the wire. Uh, Klein, Nipex, those are good brands. Uh, this one's just a generic set I've had for quite a while. They work good enough, however, I have found they do wear out. And this one doesn't strip the smaller sizes as well as it used to. And then you have the auto stripping style like this. Um, this one, I believe, is a clone of a name brand. Um, well, it's a knockoff. Bought on Amazon for cheap. It's not the greatest, but it works good enough. Um, if you do get one, make sure you can set the size for a more accurate, smaller uh, strip. This one only goes down to like half inch there, or what is that, a quarter inch, three eighths inch. It's not really good, so you kind of have to eyeball it. But again, this is just a cheap clone, cheap knockoff. It works good enough though. I tend to use these ones more for the most part. Um, so you are gonna need wire strippers. Please don't, you know, try and use a, an X-Acto knife and try and strip by hand, or I've seen people try and use cutters and try and, you know, score it a bit and pull it. Just get yourself some proper strippers. Uh, speaking of cutting stuff, um, a pair of box cutters come in very handy. Um, flush cutters as well. These are good for cutting zip ties, trimming zip ties. Um, these ones, I use these quite often. I got them for like a buck or two on AliExpress. Uh, these ones I picked up at work. I've had them for forever. Uh, flush cutters are nice because it allows you to cut stuff right close to the base for a cleaner finish. A multimeter. Uh, for a multimeter, this is just a random Mastercraft one I've had since forever. You only really need them uh, for three times during your build for the most part. Uh, for your power supply to ensure it is set to the correct uh, output voltage, either 12 or 24 volts. Most power supplies, there's a little potentiometer you can adjust. You get a few uh, volts out of that. So make sure you can tune it to the correct voltage. Uh, setting the VREF for your stepper drivers uh, without a multimeter. There are ways of doing it. However, using a multimeter is a lot easier and more precise. And lastly, continuity. If at any point you need to ensure that you have the correct wire going to the correct thing after you've run your whole uh, chain of wire, a continuity test is always good to make sure you have the right ends and also to ensure you don't have any breaks in your wire. Now for multimeters, uh, Flukes are nice. They're named brand. Um, I trust them with uh, AC current. Most of the cheap ones I'd stick to DC only. Um, however, for the limited use cases we do need, if you go with a, a cheaper one, you should be okay. The scale, vernier, and tape measure. Uh, you will have to measure things. Um, a vernier is very good for ensuring that, you know, your printed objects are to size. A scale is good for just quick off the cuff measuring and, you know, for your belts and whatnot when you're cutting into length. Um, a proper tape measure is long enough and will be good for that. Um, Vernier, you don't need to go buy a Mitutoyo or a Starrett or another higher quality brand. Uh, this is a Princess Auto Harbor Freight one. It's cheap, but for the accuracy and the uh, dimensions you're working with with 3D printing, you're really not worried about, you know, 0.01 millimeter accuracy, usually within a decimal point. 
is good enough for what we're working with. It's a 3D printer. You're spewing melted plastic out of a metal hot end. It's, it's not precision CNC for lenses, for example. So with these three types of measuring tools, you're good enough. In reality, you could probably get by with just you know a tape measure, but these two make your life a lot easier. Um, you are going to need a bottle opener of some sort for popping the uh, flanges off your 20 tooth gear. Um, I'm sure everyone has one somewhere in their house. Scissors, pliers, um, they come in handy. You got to open a million boxes when you build one of these things. Pliers are good for fishing, you know, wires through tight areas or pulling your belts around or whatever. These all come in handy. Building your hot end, uh, an adjustable and a seven mil uh, wrench. Um, I like to put the block in an adjustable and use that to hold it while I tighten. So you're gonna need these. Soldering, um, if you're building a standard uh, V2 or V1, um, with the micro switches, you are gonna have to solder your wires to the micro switch. And if you are going with a 24 volt build, you are gonna have to modify your ramps for 24 volts. So for those uh, two things, you will need a soldering iron. Now, when I started off, I bought one of these, you know, plug into the wall type kits off Amazon for cheap. Um, you can get by with those. Again, building space shuttles in sheds, nothing's really complicated that you need a super really high quality Hako or Weller um, soldering iron. So you can get by with one of these for what you are doing. However, if you do want to spend a little bit more and plan on doing other electronic hobbies, what I would actually recommend looking into is getting one of these. This is a TS-100. You can buy them on Amazon, uh, Banggood, AliExpress. It's a 24 volt, well, up to 24 volt uh, soldering iron. And when you do buy them, you can get them uh, that come with a power supply. However, what I did is I have a uh, 24 volt, uh, 360 watt power supply here, printed case, bunch of XT60 connectors. I use this for charging drone batteries and also uh, powering my TS100, like so. Um, but again, there are kits that come with a plug-in power supply and the connector is a 2155, I believe. Oh, here we go. It's a DC5525. Um, so if you have a laptop power supply that actually has that style of connector, you can use one of those. Um, if you can, get it with the BC2 tip as the stock tip. That is a lot more practical in our case. And then for soldering wire itself, um, get the 6337 stuff. Get the leaded solder with the rosin core. Uh, don't get lead-free solder and make sure it does have the rosin core. This way, uh, the flux is in the wire. You, you can buy flux on the side, but for what we're doing, this should be good enough for you know your micro switches and doing the modifications to the ramps. If you're like me and you like cable management uh, and you wanna ensure everything's all nice and bundled and you know no exposed wiring or whatever, you will have to heat shrink uh, some wires and you're gonna need a heat gun. This is just a cheap one I bought off Banggood, I believe. You can get one of these big honking ones that plug into the wall and we'll uh, put out quite a bit of heat, but for simply um, shrinking heat shrink, uh, one of these smaller ones works perfectly. They're not as loud. Um, they're a little bit more precise, I guess. Um, you can also be cheap and just use a lighter. However, that tends to melt and leave scorch marks on your heat shrink. These look a little bit cleaner and they're a little bit safer. And tapes, um, you will need some double-sided tape for attaching uh, door handles um, to your front uh, panel. Uh, Tessa tape, uh, this is for your wiring harnesses and for wrapping the wiring together. It's like a cloth-based tape, it's used in engine harnessing. And then also, um, the stuff is handy, this is Captain tape. What I use for this is uh, anywhere where there's a chance of an electronic short with um, any of your controller boards or wire or anything, um, put a layer of Captain tape down um, directly on the, the wiring or the back of the control board or PCP or whatever it is you're worried about a short and this will electronically insulate it and it actually has a really high temperature threshold. You don't really need this stuff. Um, I just like using it. it, it's handy sometimes. And for your set screws, uh, 
or grub screws if you want to call them that on your pulleys you are going to want to ensure that they do not uh, back out while your machine is running so there are some options there um, you can use Vibrotite Loctite um, you want to use the lowest strength one I don't have uh, purple on hand that stuff's actually quite expensive and hard to find in Canada so I have blue but this is for the larger um, size screws uh, Vibrotite VC3 this stuff, if you can get a hold of it for uh, a reasonable price, I wouldn't, you know, specifically go out looking for it because it is quite expensive. Uh, but this stuff is really good because you apply it to the screw and it kind of just gums it up. It doesn't harden fully, and this actually allows it to be reusable. And then, of course, uh, go raid your sister's um, makeup drawer or your mom's, or run to the dollar store and just buy some cheap, clear nail polish. Um, this stuff, you know, I've used it. I actually use it most now. Um, because this fell over and the lid won't come off and I've cracked it and I'm pretty sure this stuff is bad and this stuff um, has a tendency to stick a little too well so I really just use nail polish it you know a buck and it works just fine put a dab on put the set screw in and this will hold it Greases. Um, anywhere where you have metal on metal or anything moving you are going to want to grease um, the most common you're going to use on your boron build are the white lithium greases. Uh, this one was from Amazon. This one tube of white lithium I've had since forever. Um, we recommend white lithium, um, molly grease. There are some other blends. Basically, any grease is better than no grease on your rails, um, but we do recommend some of the, the thicker stuff because this lasts longer than... Um, for example, this is like a Super Lube oil PTFE grease, or oil actually. Um, originally, this was recommended with the V1 uh, for lubing up your bearings. However, while this works really good and it's really slippery, it tends to wear out real quick. Um, it works its way out, whereas the, the white lithium grease, uh, the molly grease, that stuff tends to stick. And, you know, you'll be a little worried when your carriage doesn't move as freely. However, this stuff lasts a lot longer and actually does have some, you know, a minor noise dampening effect. With the uh, up and coming update, um, we are moving from the tape chain to uh, uh, back to a printed chain uh, for the wire runs. And for that, um, you are going to want to get your hands on some PTFE grease. Um, this stuff's food grade, if you ever need to worry about that, for anyone who likes to print you know, cookie cutters on their printer. Um, you don't want to use white lithium on plastic as it can degrade it, but PTFE grease. Um, like this, it's not going to degrade the plastic. So you are going to get your hands on some of this for the future. Um, frankly, I, the oils is nice for any really tight, small areas. You need to drop a few drops. But you really can just grab a, a tube of the white lithium and get your hands on some of this for the future. Spoilers. And a flashlight. Use your phone. Use a, a flashlight. Um, comes in handy. You will be surprised uh, when you're flipping the machine around. Sometimes you need a little bit better light. Grab a flashlight. So that was a quick overview of some of the tools um, you will need to build your Voron printer. Again, you don't need all of what I listed. You can get by with the basics. Um, Allen keys, basic wire stripper, crimper, um, exacto knife. Um, it's not a complicated build. It looks complicated, however, it's all off-the-shelf components. It's all meant to be built in your shed. So you don't need to go and bridge port anything. You, you won't be needing anything super precise in terms of uh, measuring equipment. Um, you can spend more to get better tools, which will make your life easier. However, it is not a hard requirement when building your Voron. If you do have any questions about the tools, uh, feel free to ask below or uh, hit me up in the Voron Discord. Uh, links to all the recommended items for building your Voron will be uh, posted below in the description. Thank you. Have a good day.